All right, greetings, greetings on this lovely Sunday day. A little dreary today, but it's not bad at all. What you see here is a very unique frame, a frame that I have not seen produced before, at least on a seven inch. For center lifters and center whoops, you have this trussle type of setup that I have seen done. Chris Roster has done uh, one for the eight inch, if I'm not mistaken. But I've never seen one built in the seven inch category before. This provides stress, uh, what's it called? This trussle provides stiffness along the longitudinal axis. You can go to Chris Rosser's video and he'll explain all the ins and outs of why and why and how he designed this seven inch frame. From the first flights of it, I would say it is very stiff, very sturdy. So here I am using the FPV cycle motors. This came off another build and these are very good and stable motors from my experience. We have the O3 air unit mounted inside here. Let's see if we can see here. Yeah, we've got the uh, O3 air unit mounted inside here and the flight controller is a Suckex uh, 30 by 30 and you can see the bottom here is mounted here and then I have my um, O3 air unit mounted in the bottom here as well. This is a TPU from another build and this is where I have my GPS mounted. Currently I have the antenna for the O3 air unit mounted here for the time being. I'm waiting for them to come out with wires they'll be able to have it come over here and then eventually come out with antennas over here for my long range applications. Right now though, it I will say that it flies very well. I am uh, very pleased with it and I have never seen something uh, so smooth when it comes to 7 inch. My entire building career started out building 7 inches. So I've had a little bit of fair experiences on how difficult it is to get those residents out of here. Well this frame has definitely proven that, uh, and by the black box data as well, that this really cuts out on that residence very well. Very pleased with it. And I want to give a shout out to Chris Wasser for his uh, ingenuity when it comes to designing these frames. Now uh, I'll go on to the second part of this video and that is the assembly of this frame. These are trusses. These are separate pieces when it comes, uh, when it comes to you. CNC Madness, link provided below. You can get yours as well. These come as trusses, separate trusses. What they do is that they snap in at the top here and the bottom right here where they can uh, wedge in there. And the only thing that's keeping these trusses in here, along here, is the fact that you have your top plate on. So when you're assembling these, I found a way in which to assemble it so they could stay put. First of all, unlike what I usually do, is build out the frame first, put my parts in, and then the last step is to put the top plate on once you've done and tested everything and all that. My process is a little different when it comes to assembling this frame. First of all, before you put any of the parts in, what you do is that you assemble the frame. This will get these uh, trusses wedged into their proper places, both top and bottom. And you do this with all four trusses. You also put these which uh, these motor mountings on as well. And then you go ahead and put your, mo your, mo your motors on here. Now as you can see this is divided up in two plates. So the top plate you can get, you go ahead and mount your motor on there and then you assemble and put the bottom plate on. Now there's little cutouts here where it was designed for you to have access to the screws. However you do not get uh, straight access to the screws this way. Um, it's just the way it is. Maybe the design will be uh, where it has three separate holes, I mean four separate holes here, and yet still retain its uh, strength in there. I don't know. But right now, you don't have clear access straight to those screws. So you just go ahead and assemble the motor right onto the top plate here, the mounting plate, and then you go ahead and wedge the two together with the standoffs onto your truss system here. And you do all this with the top plate installed, so everything is staying put exactly where it is to be. After you mount your motors, then you take the top plates off, by a little, applying a little force, maybe you need to wedge something in here a little bit, not to hurt the carbon by any way, 
and you just pull these up little by little. It takes patience, but once you pull it up, the top, these trusses will remain wedged in the bottom plate here. And you can go ahead and put your flight controller in, your air unit, whatever the case is, and you go ahead and mount it. All the while making sure you don't put any, you know, force on these trusses. You don't want them to pop out the bottom here. So it's, that's the way I did it. That's the way it worked for me. And then once you put your components in here, then you put your top plate on here and then you put your screws in there. Now it's not a matter of forcing these trusses into their places. What I did is I used a wedge se setup. I would put the trusses here after they're assembled and put them into their places and then put the top plate on and gradually screw down little by little uh, not all at one time at each of the trusses here here and then you will put another one here and here and you just work yourself along here little by little making sure that these things are in their places so they snap in place so it's a little different approach than what I'm used to assembling frames and this is a relatively unique build with these trusses so I'm sure that a lot of tutorials will come out on uh, exactly step by step but I hope this helps uh, on all of you who are, I'm sure looking forward to assembling this frame and hopefully the steps that I just explained would uh, assist you in that it seems uh, I found this out uh, by trial and error and hopefully you can use what I did to make it easier for you to assemble your frame. But once it's assembled, it's very stiff, very strong, no torsional twistness or anything like that. And uh, it's a very sturdy, very precise setup. And this whole thing works together on how well these things are wedged in these slots here. And as such, it's a very ingenious little frame. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, see your comments below, see your experiences or what you, if you have gotten your frame or not and any questions you have. All right, the second part of this video is going to be these goggles here. As you know, I'm using the L3 Air unit, but I also had a pair of DJI version two goggles. I went ahead and just recently put these uh, iFlight uh, antennas on here, this kit here, and this is version two. I went ahead and upgraded the firmware so it could work with the L3 Air unit. I went ahead and put the OSD on the 4.4 version, which I'm using for 4.4 uh, beta flight that I'm using. And so now I'm able to put my OSD up here, and uh, it works really well with it. I like the uh, the goggles too. Uh, this is just easier to look at, easier to use. That's the only reason I had these just sitting around for years collecting dust in the in the box and everything so that's why uh, it's just I decided to go ahead and make use of them and I'll just go ahead and use it just for the L3 air unit I'm not gonna run into the problem of trying to switch between the goggles 2 and the old air unit or the vistas because I already have the version 1 goggles bound and everything for that and if when I fly those which majority of my fleet still is I just use those goggles instead but with these, just use these for the uh, O3 aliens. I've got about two of them in my builds. One of them is in the uh, Chris Rosher 7-inch uh, frame, ultra long range. And I like it. It's good. It's great. I have no issues with it whatsoever. So I hope this video helps. And this is just what I have done and it what works for me. So adieu, adwav, and stay flying.